a while back you wrote about I think it was about 2009, if I remember correctly, but you were making a case that change in the education system at large would need to come from sort of external factors. Is that still your your sense? I don't think the educational system can be changed from within in any mm. meaningful way. The public schooling system cannot. Mm. And the reason is because you know, some things can change by evolution. You can make small changes and then they seem to work and then you make somewhat smaller, bigger changes and bigger changes. That doesn't work for our educational system. It's been tried over and over again. We've right, been right. through historically many phases of, uh, or at least several phases where progressive ideas in, in public education became prominent. I mean, this was mm -hmm. true in the years before, between the First and Second World War, mm -hmm. there was the Dewey Movement. There was a lot of progressive ideas within public schools. With the war that got all destroyed, we stepped back and, and, and there was mixed success with that. And then in the 1960s and early mm -hmm. 70s, there was again some movement in this direction. The problem is, as long as you hold the belief that children are all supposed to be learning the same things, that there's some core mm -hmm. things that everybody has to learn at the same age. <laughs> right. And you're right. going to test them on that. And the success of your system depends upon how well they do on that test. Mm -hmm. Then anything you do other than teaching to the test is going to look like regression, like you're failing. So every time mm -hmm. there's a progressive <laughs> movement, test scores for some kids go down. <laughs> they do mm -hmm. go down. Right, you know, right. in, in many kids are just not truly ready to know how to learn how to read when they're five or six years old. <laughs> mm -hmm. But if you have a belief that the school system is failing, if the kids can't read by then, then if unless you're forcing them to read, that system is failing. So, so what happens is, that there's a progressive movement and then there's somebody who's saying, well, this is all failed, this is all not working because we've got so many kids who can't read and they're six years mm -hmm. old, seven years old, they can't read or they're not doing as well as they used to on the geography tests or they're not doing this or that. And then everything tightens up. So we saw this, there was a little bit of a progressive toward, direction towards a progressive movement in the 60s and 70s and then right, the right. 1980s. Well, that was what, that the, was the rise of the the what's now called back to basics was was it really came to prominence in that 60s 70s era and that yeah. was the reaction and the, and so then there was reaction there was this this book the government sponsored book about how our schools are failing that mm -hmm. we're in danger mm -hmm. as a nation because our children aren't scoring as high on tests as the east asian children are and right, right. uh and so then that led ultimately to no child left behind it led to situations even worse than we've ever had before right right uh so so that's the problem mm -hmm. unless so no school system is going to say we're going to do away with tests they're just not going to say mm -hmm. that we're going to do mm -hmm. away with tests we're just going to leave it up to the judgment of the kids and the families as to how they're doing. Uh, we're not going to fail people. We're not going to schools. That's the step that schools, public school systems are not going to take. Now, and as long as they don't take that, there is no chance that improvement in schooling and education can occur through those schools. Right, right. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs, so that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host. Don Berg.